As so often happens, I record a 10 to 11 minute video, and then when I'm done, I realize there are some important things I left out. So I'm going to make a second part to this Venn diagram regression video. So as, as we were talking about, if y is a dependent variable, such as income, x1 is an explanatory variable, education, x2 is an explanatory variable, such as experience, then when you run the regression, this orange is the information that's going to be used to calculate the slope, the relationship between education and income. This, I'm not sure what color to call that, we'll call it grayish, uh, color will be used to calculate the slope and the standard error between experience and income. And this little intersection of all three is not going to be used as information to calculate a slope or a standard error, although it will be used to, in, uh, since it is a part of income that's explained, it will be included in R-squared, but not, uh, not as information to make us confident about what the slope is between these variables and income. And then at the end of the last video, we were looking at uh, the consequences of throwing in an irrelevant variable, just some random set of numbers that shouldn't be in there. Uh, anything could happen is basically the lesson. You know, it, it could be that this random variable happens to be very correlated with experience. And so that's going to mean that even though experience does have a relationship with income, we won't be able to tell it because this variable is masking the information that's related. And same thing, it could do the same thing here, or it could be highly correlated with both variables, education and experience, and it could decrease our confidence as we, as we looked at. Now it could, just by random chance, be for the most part unrelated to education and experience, but it could randomly just have a high relationship to income. And therefore, we, we're going to be convinced that this random variable, shoe size, for example, really does have a, a, an explanatory effect on people's income, when really it's just it just happened due to random chance. And so the lesson here is anything could happen. But it's likely that the effect will be slight. You know, it, it, it's likely that a random variable will just have a little relationship with income and a little relationship with maybe these other two variables. And so it, it's not likely to have a big impact. So let's just throw that away for a minute. Now, the very important thing that I didn't mention in the last video is omitted variables. And I'm going to come back to this idea again and again. X1 is education. X2 is experience. Now, what is going to happen if we just decide to leave that variable out? We omit it. We're going to omit the variable experience from the regression. Now, we're not going to know what the relationship is between experience and, and income, but that's not the worst thing. The worst thing is that this little area that used to be kind of thrown away, because it really shouldn't be used, let's cover that up with the green to, so we can visualize it, that green area should not be used to explain the relationship between education and income, because it's not really unique to the relationship between education and income. It shouldn't be used. But if we don't include this important variable, what the regression mathematics is going to do is use that information in two ways. The first way it's going to use it is in the calculation of the slope between education and income, which is bad. It's going to bias our slope. Our slope will not be correct. Secondly, it's going to think that this information should be used to calculate the standard errors and the t-statistics and everything for the relationship between education and income, which is also incorrect. It shouldn't happen. And so let me go ahead and, and go through an example of bias because you can't see this enough. Okay, so if this was our real equation, 
the real one that God might tell us that income is only explained with a y-intercept education and experience and of course there is this stochastic error term I'm just dropping that for the moment these are the two explanatory variables that should be in the equation if we don't put experience in so we're leaving out the second variable then what's going to happen is our estimate for the education b1 is going to be biased and how is it going to be biased? Well, we can calculate the sign of the bias, and in some cases you can actually come up with the magnitude, but I don't want to focus on the magnitude. I just want to focus on the sign of the bias. If you get that, you're golden. The sign of the bias, we want to look at the sign of B2. That's the same B2 right here. What would the sign of the experience variable B. What would we expect that to be? Well, we would expect that to be positive. That is, the more experience you get, it should have a positive impact on your income. Now, in some uh, ways in, and in some industries, that might not be true. But let's just suppose, for the sake of argument, that we expect that to be positive. Now, this second term of the bias to tell is it going to be a positive or a negative bias is so a lot of times we call it alpha 1 or alpha 1 2. Now this is the relationship between these two variables education and experience. So if we were just to run a regression between those two things education and experience what would the slope be? What would the correlation between them be? Now, again, this depends on the field that you're talking about. It might be that someone who has more experience in a field also has more education in the field. In other words, they're positively correlated. Now, let's assume that that's the case to begin with. Another positive sign. So the sign of the bias when we leave out experience is going to be positive times positive equals a positive, which means that it would have a positive bias. Now what does that really mean to you and me? Well, what that means is that, is that our estimate, this is our estimate of the slope between education and income when we leave out that variable experience. We're having omitted variables bias. So our estimate is going to be biased and it's going to be equal to whatever the true slope should be plus the bias. And all we know, and this is all you often know, is that that bias is going to be positive, some positive number. So let's put in some numbers so that we can get a feeling for what this would be. Suppose that the true slope, we call up God, hello God, what's the real slope between education and income? And suppose he tells us for each additional year of education, the true slope for all people all mankind is that uh, for each additional year of education your income will go up by let's say three right that's the true number we don't know three what we don't know what currency we're talking about that's okay now that number three is the true number and our estimate is going to be 3 plus some number that is a positive number because the bias is positive. Now we don't know the bias, but suppose a very talented mathematician or God himself tells us that the bias is around 2. It's just some positive number. Don't worry about whether it's 2, but it's some positive number. And we're, we're putting in 2 to see what will happen here. Then what estimate will we get? Well, the estimate we're going to get is going to be the real estimate plus a positive number. And so our, our estimate is going to be a number that's too large, something like 5, right? So a positive bias means that our estimate is going to be larger than it should be. It's going to be equal to the true number plus some other positive number. Now, suppose you were looking at a different field where there's uh, we still expect experience to have a positive slope with income but when we leave it out in this different field the relationship this alpha 1 2 the relationship between experience and education is actually 
negative. And so what would the bias look like? Well, we still expect that slope between experience and income, the B2, to be positive. But the relationship between experience and education is negative. Maybe if you spend so time in so much time in school, you're not getting that real world experience out there. So in a some kind of job field, it's negative. A positive times a negative, the relationship between experience and education, the product is going to be a negative bias. What does that mean? Well, what that means is that if the real estimate, God tells us, is three, and our bias was two, but now it's a negative two, then what kind of estimate are we going to get? Well, our estimate is only going to be one, because that's three minus two.